Kirito Tram, the director of the Institute for Lay Ecclesial Ministry and Service in the Department of Pastoral Ministry of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. And I welcome you um, once again from my home office. And today we have another great guest. Uh, it's my colleague, Ms. Gigi Sepian. She is the Secretariat Director for Evangelization catechesis and faith formation of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. Now, Gigi holds an MA in catechetics from Notre Dame Institute in Arlington, Virginia, and STL studies from the, Pontifica, the uh, Pontifical Faculty of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C. I need uh, just a sip of coffee, Gigi. Right ahead. It's early in the morning, and all those degrees needs that extra coffee. <laughs> now, she's also an adjunct professor at the Franciscan University in the of Steubenville, and has served as an instructor at the University of Dallas School of Ministry. Gigi, welcome. Thank you, Peter. It's great to be here this morning with everybody. Now, it's important. Do you have the materials needed for this session? Coffee? There you go. go. Perfect. <laughs> now, today we have a very interesting topic, right? It's Easter people witnessing Christ from our living room to HEV. And that's a very fascinating topic um, that we are going to dive in in a couple of minutes. But how about if we can begin before we go into all of that um, with prayer? Let's pause and, um, and let's keep in mind in our hearts and our prayer. Let's bring to our prayer everyone that is suffering from this pandemic, especially those who have passed away, those who are caring for, those who are sacrificing um, their days um, to accompany those who are uh, sick and ill. So let's begin all together this prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, in these times of tribulation, we turn to you, O Mother. See with compassion the suffering of your beloved sons and daughters affected by the coronavirus pandemic throughout the entire world. Ask your son to have mercy on us, bringing healing to those infected and protection to all your children. Jesus Christ, Savior of all people, grant us courage to accompany and care for the entire world in the wake of sorrow and uncertainty. We seek refuge in you, and according to your promise, deliver us from this danger. Amen. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for, pray us. for us. Thank you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gigi, the floor is yours. So what do we mean when we say Easter people? Easter people. Well, that's not a new term. Uh, we are indeed an Easter people, uh, people of the resurrection, of the faith and knowledge of eternal life. And that's what St. Augustine meant when he coined the term Easter people back in the fourth century. We celebrate the resurrection every Sunday, right? Every Sunday is a mini Easter, uh, a re-celebration of the resurrection. We actually live out the whole Paschal mystery throughout the mass and we celebrate that joyful resurrection and the promise of eternal life and we give thanksgiving in the eucharist which is what the eucharist means right so we are in our very bones as christians uh, an easter people so we celebrate the resurrection and we are an easter people also in preparation during the easter season in preparation for the next great feast that Jesus is preparing us for, just like he prepared his apostles for. He prepared them for the coming of his spirit of justice and truth 
at Pentecost, right? When the apostles witnessed powerfully to the kerygma, the kerygma, which is the truth about who Jesus is and the good news of our salvation. So that's what being an Easter people is all about. And these are all examples of how we should be living and they're a challenge for us. So how do we witness to Christ in our homes or wherever we may happen to be in these limited places that we can be uh, during this Easter season? Well, first of all, our homes have truly become the embodiment of the domestic church, haven't they, uh, during this period? That's another term that comes from the very, very early church. Uh, it's a concept that really came out of the fact that the earliest Christian communities lived their faith within their homes. There were no parishes. Uh, the apostles preached wherever they went. And Christians practiced their faith in the home. So that the first churches were domestic churches. So how can we live it? I think if we look at the Acts of the Apostles, uh, it gives us a clue. In Acts 3.42, uh, a domestic church is actually described. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. They ate their meals in exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God. So that's something we should all be doing. And there's a whole lot more we can say about the domestic church but we can save that for another coffee and ministry. Now, outside of our homes, how can we witness to Christ in these limited kinds of ways? Well, I believe that wherever we happen to be, we can do the same. Um, I don't know about you, I've limited myself to going outside my walls once a week to go to the HEB wearing a mask, right? Like we've been asked to. And it may, besides being courteous, besides not cutting in front of people in the long lines waiting to check out, besides keeping our social distance, what does that mean? Well, let me give you an example of something that I did this past weekend. And perhaps I'm going to be asking you, what might have you done? Well, this past weekend, I was thinking of a friend who lives south of the city. And as you might imagine, along with all the other events that have been postponed or canceled, among those things was the Poteet Strawberry Festival. And there were a lot of extra strawberries sitting in the fields. So I called up a friend of mine and said, can I come and take some of those off your hands? You just have to open the gate. I know where to go and what to do. Leave me a bucket at the end of the road and a flat and I will do the picking myself. And that's what I did. So I went and for three and a half hours, bent over, boy, I was so glad for God's gift of ibuprofen after that. I picked a flat of strawberries. That's 24 little pint baskets. And then I got in my car, closed the gate, and proceeded 
to give them away. I kept one basket for myself, but I made a list of friends who lived in my area and thought, I want to bring a little piece of springtime, of new hope, and something joyful. So that's what I did. I spent a whole gas tank running around happily because I hadn't been in my car. So it was a great day and God provided such a beautiful weekend, didn't he? And gave away all my strawberries, which I paid for, by the way. And I gave the strawberry harvester or the, the person who owns the field, I gave them 10 more dollars than what they usually charge just because they're having a more difficult time. So that's what I did, but I saved some for Sunday. And on Sunday, I went to visit again. We had such beautiful weather, thanks be to God. I visited four ladies who I know from my parish. Called them ahead of time that I was coming, took a lawn chair and said, you sit at your, in your doorway and I'm gonna sit on your lawn and we're gonna visit. And they've been virtual shut-ins themselves. They have families who can't visit them. Uh, but because they're older ladies and they all have underlying conditions and I spent my Sunday having visits with them. And I tell you, it was one of the best weekends of my life. They also got their strawberries. And so that was my little way of witnessing to Christ, prayed with them, course after our virtual Sunday Mass and I actually think I got more out of it and received more graces and happiness and joy out of the weekend than po possibly anyone else. So that's that was one little way that the Lord inspired me uh, to go out and do something that I really never done before. So these unusual times call for us to kind of think out of the box, to do things that we might have not done before in our witnessing to our faith, to our beliefs, and to reach out to the community around us. So does anyone else have an example they'd like to share? I have one. Uh, in this weekend, actually, um, one co-worker brought out of nowhere a medicine that was needed um, for um, my family. And, um, and it just, um, you know, let me know um, about 30 minutes um, before um, uh, they arrived. And that was to me, um, a blessing because I never, you know, we are always thinking about how far we can go. I have my mom living with me and, you know, taking care of the, uh, of, her, of her and, and exposure to people. But that sign of caring that was uh, uncalled and it was profoundly touching and that sense of um, that somebody else caring. So um, that to me was very, very powerful that sign of care for me. Mm -hmm. I always thought about, you know, we, we going and, and, and finding Christ and being um, caring of others. So to, to be at the receiving end of that care that was very profoundly touching. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gigi, thank you. Well, you know, Peter, uh, something else that, that occurred to me, uh, I mentioned God's gift of ibuprofen. It, 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 uh, it didn't take away the ache completely of bending over for three, three and a half hours. And on my way back, I was thinking about those who pick our fruits and vegetables for a living, who do this not for three and a half hours, but from dawn to night and gave me a true physical appreciation for those who labor in our fields and who make possible what we so often take for granted. 
they're often in our prayers, but I made a specific point to include them in my rosary that I prayed in the hour drive on the way back to San Antonio. So uh, I want to say that thinking, trying to think out of the box and being open to the inspirations of the Spirit brings to mind and to our hearts more than just what we're doing. It really helps to bring to mind others, others mm -hmm. who we ordinarily don't think about or who are not in our circle. So if we are open to it, the mm -hmm. spirit can really reach into us and bring out uh, great fruits. Um, not only those that we can eat, but right. other spiritual fruits. Right. And speaking of fruits, right, uh, in preparation for Pentecost, we have the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which take root, blossom, and bear in us when we, when we strive to be rooted in that spirit of justice and truth. So I wanted to ask people, you know, as we consider the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, peace, joy, gentleness, and all the others, in what ways has this been made manifest for you during this Easter season as we strive to be Easter people? And all of us that you are listening um, and, and, and being in this meeting, please feel free to either unmute yourself and share, or you can use the chat section. Feel free to share. I have a question, though, uh, from one of the attendees, Gigi. As mm -hmm. we uh, ponder your question, um, in, this, in the midst of the pandemic, as the struggles and suffering, how do we witness to someone who we know is struggling with their own faith and is angry sometimes at any people who, is, who are religious? How do we witness to them? Someone who is struggling with faith and who is angry at people who are religious? Right. It seems to me, of course, I don't know this person, but people who struggle with faith are often angry. They may be upset that God would permit such a thing. They might believe that people with faith are naive, or are blind to others suffering. Very often people who struggle need someone to listen first to their struggles. They need to see that we who have faith accompany them in their struggle and that people of faith have struggles too. And we rely on our faith and on the prayer, on our relationship with God to strengthen our faith and our trust that this too shall pass, right? You know, we have all kinds of examples from scripture of those who have undergone great struggles. We just have to look at Job, who was taunted for having faith in the midst of great trials that God permitted. And yet, he said, God can do whatever, I will not lose faith. And those who are angry need to express their, their emotions. We do not permit them, however, 
to harm uh, to harm themselves or harm others, of course. But very often our witness is more about listening, is more about walking with them, and more about being an example rather than preaching to them. It's more about asking them how else you can assist them. It's about showing them some of the beautiful ways other people who, are, who might be struggling with faith are helping others, which always gives us a boost. You know, uh, it was Pope Francis, and I've seen this quite a bit on Facebook, who said in a recent homily that it is a great thing to do things that make us joyful, but it's a much better thing to do other things that make others joyful. And that comes back and gives grace and joy to us. Mm -hmm. So is that at least a bit helpful? Thank you. Yes, yes, Gigi. We have Susan Rodriguez um, that wants to share. Please, Susan, if you can unmute yourself. Am I muted? Yes, you are. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, I just wanted to share that I share my Christian faith with my Christian family members and my non-Christian family members and friends. Some are Catholic Christians, some are Protestant Christians, and some are not believers of Jesus at all. But a simple text or a simple phone call to ask them, I'm going to HEB, can I pick up your grocery items for you? I'll try to find what you need, or if I've got it in my pantry, I'll bring it to you. I ask them, uh, are you well? Is everybody in your family well? If not, I can send you something by Amazon. And we stay in touch also saying, does anybody need prayer? Do, do you need a simple assistance? Can I come and help you do something? And it's easier than I thought to keep a social distance and still maintain a real contact with these people that I love and are concerned about. And I just wanted to share that. I'm sure everybody's doing that, but that's what has kept me stayed, uh, has kept me involved with the people I love. That's it. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. You're welcome. Beautiful, beautiful. Gigi, then okay. another question. Then how do we prepare for Pentecost um, and this uncertainty whether or not we'll be able to come back and celebrate as we, the church has usually celebrated. So we have come from Easter, a beautiful celebration in a very unusual way. Now we, we are a couple of weeks away uh, from Pentecost. How can we prepare to celebrate Pentecost, Gigi? Let's see, Pentecost, if I'm not mistaken, is May 31st. Um, May begins on Friday. Friday is May 1st. And we know at least at the present time uh, here in the San Antonio Archdiocese, the Archbishop has um, suspended uh, celebration of public masses through the 18th. And we don't know if uh, that will be extended. But even if it's not, it may very likely be, and trust me, I, I don't know any more than any of you know. I, I don't. Uh, very likely, the Pentecost celebration, whatever we have, will likely not be the kind of Pentecost vigil celebrations that Archbishop has hosted in the past, simply because there's still too many unknowns um, about what we're living through right now. So in our preparation, we need to be living 
more like these early Christians that I referenced earlier. I think one of the important ways that we can prepare ourselves apart from witnessing in the way that we've described here and in other ways in which we may be inspired by the Holy Spirit. We try to, of course, uh, attend virtual mass when we can, even though we know that the obligation to attend mass has been suspended. We need to be nourishing ourselves spiritually. And one of those ways is, I think I, well, one of the things I'm doing and which I can recommend to you is reading those passages from the earliest church, the book of Acts. The book of Acts prepares for Pentecost. It talks about how the early Christians lived immediately following Pentecost. And it gives us an insight into Paul's conversion and first steps after his experience of the Holy Spirit. So it's very important that we continue to nourish ourselves spiritually, to make spiritual communion something we can do every day, and to look to the scriptures, which, you know, it's in the book of Hebrews, uh, in it's St. Paul who tells us that scripture cuts between joint and marrow, between muscle and bone. It's penetrating. It never comes back unfulfilled. And so knowing that if we can do some Lectio Divina, either with the scriptures of the day, which uh, we can access, all of those who are online now, uh, can access the daily scriptures at uh, usccb.org right on the calendar that's on the landing page. You click the date and we get the scriptures of the day. We can do Lectio Divina there. But in addition, I think a prayerful reading of the Acts of the Apostles is particularly fruitful in this period. Thank you so much, Gigi. I know we have more, um, a couple of people that want to share. And um, unfortunately, because of time, we will have to uh, continue next time. But if you would like to learn more and dialogue more about these and other topics about our faith, um, always please, you can visit our Archdiocesan website and learn about the many courses that the Institute for Lay Ecclesian Ministry and Services is unveiling soon. How about if we end, Gigi, with a prayer, a prayer that um, St. John Paul II prayed in 1986 when he was in Australia, in the Angeles. And um, in the middle of the um, um, tensions of the um, possible war, he delivered this profound um, homily in the Angeles. How about if we finish our gathering with that prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. We are not looking for a shallow joy, but rather a joy that comes from faith, that grows through unselfish love, that respects the fundamental duty of love of our neighbor, without which it would be unbecoming to speak of joy. We realize that joy is demanding, it demands unselfishness, it demands unreadiness to say with Mary, be it done unto me according to your word. Lord, may this pandemic never take away generosity and love that we may be able to recognize you today and always in our neighbor, especially the most in need. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, and especially Gigi. Thank you for sharing your talents, your wisdom. And until next time, and again, coffee and ministry, because as somebody said, ministry is better with coffee. Well, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blessed Have a week. Bless everyone.
Thanks again. Thank you. Bye.